You are listening to the Atlanta Real Estate Forum radio show, all about real estate edition. Shining a light on the movers and shakers in the real estate industry. The home builders, developers, realtors, and suppliers making it all happen. Good morning and welcome back to Atlanta Real Estate Forum Radio. I'm your host, Carol Morgan, and I'd like to recognize Denim Marketing as our show sponsor. Known as a trendsetter, Denim Marketing has been blogging since 2006 and podcasting since 2011. Um, we're currently working on strategies for the Google Helpful Content Update and for ways to incorporate AI into sales and marketing. So contact us if you need original quality content for social media, public relations, blogging, email marketing, and promotions. Well, with that, we are going to talk about a topic that I am passionate about today, and that is workforce development. Um, the reality is, you know, we can't start too soon with workforce development. You know, the younger we can reach kids, the better. Um, today, we're going to talk about what one HBA is doing to move the needle and to help with workforce development. I'm very excited to welcome Robin Wallace. She's the executive officer with the Greater Columbus Home Builder Association um, today to the show. Welcome, Robin. Thank you so much for having me, Carol. I am thrilled to be here. Well, let's just jump into it. Start by telling us a little bit about yourself and your background. Well, I am originally from Illinois, grew up in a small little farm town, um, I was very, I led a very sheltered life. I didn't know what kind of world was out there. And I think that's, um, I think my passion for workforce development started then without me even knowing it. Because unless you're exposed to things, uh, you don't know about it. And, you know, growing up in an era before, you know, cell phones and, you know, we didn't have cable TV and, you know, we didn't have a lot of those luxuries because we lived in a small farm community. So when I was in high school, that's when you first started really talking about what do you want to be when you grow up? And well, I don't know what, what can I be? I mean, you know, what opportunities are out there? No one in my family had gone to college before me. So I was the first, my parents didn't really know what to do, um, you know, or how to guide me. We didn't really have a guidance counselor other than, you know, the community college came in and spoke and then you could take career days, but my parents couldn't take off work for that. Um, you know, that's money out of the family's, you know, pocket. So right. um, there just wasn't a lot of opportunities. So I knew I didn't want to be a farmer. I knew I didn't want to be marry a farmer. I knew I didn't <laughs> want to stay in that town. And so the first opportunity to get out when I graduated school, um, I ended up going, I, I found out that you could go to school for broadcasting had no idea. That was an outlet for me as a child was radio um, because I always, you know, listened to the stations in the big cities and um, loved visiting. So I ended up going to school. Um, I started uh, my, my degree is in mass communications. Um, I thought I wanted to be in TV. Um, I have done TV and um, did a TV show here locally in the greater Columbus area up until about four years ago when I changed careers. Um, but I started my career in radio and then I moved to Georgia, came to Columbus and loved it and spent 15 years doing radio in this community. Uh, I was a radio program director, morning show host. And when, you know, it came time to settle down and I decided I really didn't want to get up at 3.30 in the morning, you know, the rest of my life, um, I thought I might want to sleep in a little bit and see what else was out there. I had an opportunity to become the marketing director um, and the events uh, and over events at the Greater Columbus Civic Center. So then I started doing live entertainment and producing concerts and, um, you know, managing the staff. So, you know, of the events, uh, the events staff um, and handling the marketing campaigns for, you know, hockey, you know, basketball, um, the tours that came to town, the rodeos, all of that. And then uh, when the opportunity to um, when the position of executive officer at the Home Builders Association opened up, um, I was approached by a builder who said, um, I think you need to apply for this job. I just feel like this is for you and we need somebody. 
So I applied, got the job, and I feel like this is exactly where I need to be. I'm a jack of all trades. I do a little bit of everything. Um, I'm the master of none, but <laughs> I love to, um, I, I love that my job is different every day. Um, I love the the people in the association I get to work with, the amazing people across the state and the country that I've gotten to know. I mean, you, Carol, I've gotten to know through this job and um, it's, it's exciting. I mean, I, I love what this industry is all about. I love what the association is about and what we stand for. When I started four years ago, um, I knew that the board of directors really wanted to implement a consistent workforce development mm -hmm. program. Yeah. So um, that's kind of where that's I know you asked me one question and I just keep, <laughs> You're just keep I, on I, going. I just keep leading into that's one, okay. you know, one thing leads to another. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the home building market in um, the greater Columbus area. Then we'll dive into workforce development. Okay. But, you know, okay. what's it like there now? I know it's, it's grown a lot. Recently, it really right? has. Yes, it has. Um, I mean, we are definitely a growing community. The neighboring county um, to us is was very rural when I first moved um, to Columbus. And um, and I live in that county now, moved out there many years ago because I loved it. And now to see it being built up just um, two months, well, just last month, I went to an event, an open house at the very first planned apartment community um, in that area. And wow. then there's a housing development that's connected to that. And um, and it's just the, the community is, that community is really growing. It's just such a rural um, county. It's a very large county. Um, but to see all the development happening there yeah. is pretty exciting. Well, you know, it's funny, you know, being in Metro Atlanta, um, when we go to, you know, market watches and forecasts now, we're not just talking about Metro Atlanta anymore. We're talking about mm -hmm. Columbus and Warner Robins and Augusta and Macon and, you know, even what are the, what are the markets doing down in um, Brunswick and Savannah and St. Simons because, you know, so much of Atlanta, you know, there's nothing to stop Atlanta from sprawling. So the sprawl just continues. And, you know, to build affordable homes, so many of our builders have started to look to some of the tertiary markets to be able to bring affordable housing there because it's really hard to bring it into Atlanta anymore. So I suspect we shall see your market continue to grow. I'm sure that. you will. And I'm sure you'll be hearing a lot more about us in the coming Absolutely. years in, in your market watch because, um, yeah, it's it definitely is a growing community. Yeah. Well, let's dive into careers in construction and workforce force development. Obviously, it's a huge challenge for the industry. We have thousands and thousands and thousands of open jobs. Um, but you created a little bit of a solution for that. Talk about the program that you guys developed for, you know, fifth grade students and how that works. Okay, well, we developed it for fifth grade students. We also did it with a group of eighth graders. And this program can be adapted to any school district in the country, K through 12. Um, but we started with, I guess I put myself in the position of these young children because I have a daughter in sixth grade. So I'm, I'm in it, I'm living it with her right now where they're really starting to introduce these kids at such a young age to so many things. And, you know, me, as I said earlier, you know, growing up in a very sheltered environment and not really knowing what was out there, we want to expose our child to everything. And maybe, and we see the things that she's interested in that's, that kind of sticks. And we want that for these young people. And so we picked fifth grade because we thought that was a really good age because they're still young and fun and, and they want to try new things and, you know, they're not as opinionated. And we also wanted to make sure that this group of kids, we didn't, you know, hey, we've all been on field trips and you're like, oh, thank goodness I get out of school for the day. And you go and you do something and, you know, do you really... Did I get a lot out of it? Not so much. I was just excited to get out of school. But we want these kids to get something out of it. So that's where it started. These kids had to have an interest 
in learning more about careers in construction and the building industry and um, engineering and architecture and, you know, interior design and, um, you know, just throwing things out there to the kids. And so the teachers and the academic advisors that we pulled into the project from Columbus State University, they helped uh, choose the students. So we knew we had a group coming that was extremely excited to um, explore those opportunities. Mm -hmm. So we took the students from the fifth grade and we did a career exploration day at Jordan Vocational High School College and Career Academy. They have a CTAE program and they have a construction program. And it is good. Um, and it is one of four in the state of Georgia doing what they're doing. Wow. Okay. Um, and it's pretty impressive. And these students are, are impressive. So we, uh, we set up stations in the construction department. Um, several stations. So these kids learned about careers overall. We read um, one station was some of the the women um, high school students read the house that she built to all of the students. Um, they learned about welding, electrical, carpentry, plumbing, and then they each got to work with their high school mentor in the construction department to build a birdhouse from scratch. Ooh, fun. So that was really fun for the students. So they'd go through all the, the stations. They had questions that they had to fill out and take notes on each station. So that way we knew, again, they weren't just playing. They were really having to put pen to paper and write down what they were learning about. Right. They learned about what it would take for them to um, be able to do that as a career. Is that something that you could do at the high school, get certified and do it immediately out of high school? Would you need to go to technical college, a four-year? They learned all about that as well. That's fantastic. So, well, so real quickly, how did, so you said that each fifth grader had a high school mentor. So was it one-on-one? -on -one? You had as many high schoolers in the program as you did fifth graders? We did not. Um, we had, um, we kind of paired them depending on their interests. Mm -hmm. So if they were really interested in like electrical work, we made sure that they were with the electrical students. So okay. probably five or six students. And then we had at least two of the, of the students in the construction program. But then mentoring the high school kids were our members. Oh, so that's fantastic. we had our members involved in this project as well. So they were there throughout the day and working, you know, they would work right alongside, you know, with the high school students and the fifth graders. Mm -hmm. um, and it worked out great mm -hmm. because these kids really had a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. They had to, they had to get all of their, you know, questions answered on their, you know, questionnaire. Um, and so they really were interested and we got good questions out of them. They were able to take away, you know, electrical sockets that they could take home and play with. They, they were able to take home a birdhouse that uh, when they finished with all the construction students, the last stop was the art department. So we brought in the arts and the high school art teacher and the high school art students help the kids design and personalize their birdhouse. And so they, that was their takeaway for that day. That's so awesome. it was, it was a great project. And then we, you know, then we had lunch before we sent them, you know, back to school and we talked about, you know, some of the things that they had learned and it really was, it was great because it was hands-on, it was real world tasks and yeah. um, they were able to construct, design, put their skills and, you know, to work. So it was that it was a one day event. But then you had some follow-ups. They went to the high school, they participated hands-on, they learned about all the different careers, they got their high school mentor, they worked with some of the HBA members, then they go back to school and what happened then? They went back to school and they knew that they would have to be, they would have to do a writing assignment on what they learned. Because again, I think the more you expose them, 
the the more they'll remember. And, you know, we want to make that impression in their mind that careers in construction are really cool. And, you know, this is something that you can do. And it's right. This program is right here in your backyard. <laughs> and um, so they knew that they were going to have to do that. So we had our college um, academic advisors they came and helped uh, in the with the English language arts teachers and the students again. The mm -hmm. construction students mm -hmm. participated in these in these writers workshops. So that's where the magic happened, because seeing those kids see the high school kids come to their turf. Mm -hmm. And they knew them, they knew their names. That's pretty exciting when you're, yeah. you know, 10, 11 years old and in fifth grade. That's kind of, a, that's a big deal. So the high school students worked with them on putting together their essays on what they had learned about their day at the high school. So that was the first step. Uh, then after that, then they learned about editing and we were able to go in and they learned, you know, about we corrected mistakes. Um, we wanted to make sure that everything, you know, was was right. They learned about what it would what it was to be a published author. What did that mean? And, um, you know, so they were very invested in the project because if other people are going to be looking at it, you want to make sure that it says good as it can be, and it's exactly as you want it to be. Um, then from there, we went back again. So now we're touching these students how many times? Um, and again, talking about careers in construction and tell us about what you learned and illustrate something that goes with the story uh, that you told. Okay. So they did that. And um and of course, you know, the illustrations are wonderful. We had a few students that said, I'm not a very good drawer, but I did get on the computer and I printed out some stuff and I'd really like to put this in there. Mm. I mean, they really, really thought about what was going to be in this book. Right. So that was the project. I mean, so we went back several times. Um, and then in January and February, we started doing the final edits myself and um, the academic advisors, and we started putting the book together. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Not really knowing what it was, you know, what it was going to be. Is this going to be just a paperback book? Is it going to be, you know, a small little thing? I mean, we just didn't know. But as we got into it and the more people that saw it, and were just, just, you know, mesmerized by it and impressed at what we had been doing. Um, and we worked with the print shop at uh, Muskogee County School District. And they said, this just has to be a hard cover. It just has to be. And they were right. It had to be a hard cover. So it's fantastic. It's, um, and it turned out beautifully. Yeah. Um, we... We are really proud of this project. We actually had a book unveiling uh -huh. uh, in the month of May. And the student, we brought in all of the mentors from the high school. We brought in all of the fifth grade students. We invited all of the parents of all of the students. We had um, school board members. We had the um, superintendent of the school board was there and he spoke. We had, um, of course, our, you know, our members um, of our Home Builders Association. We had members from the state and Alan Cannon out of the Athens HBA is the first vice president of Home Builders of Georgia. And he spoke mm -hmm. and he spoke directly to those fifth graders and talked about his career, his career and his passion for his career in construction. I love that. And it was magic. All of the children then, um, we called out their names and invited everyone to come up. We handed them a wrapped book and did a countdown. They all they all um, unwrapped their book. They all saw it for the first time. And to see their reactions was just incredible. 
They were so excited. The high school kids were excited. Uh, we did an autograph signing. Oh, and fun. It was really, really great. That's fantastic. Well, I know that you guys have already even, it's an award-winning book, right? You yes. won an award from the Greater Columbus Chamber for the project of the year. We did. Um, and I'm sure that wasn't anticipated, but a very cool outcome of it. But what's, Very cool outcome. So moving forward, will you do it again? Or what happens next with the Careers in Construction program? We have been asked, as far as this project goes, um, now that we've done it once um, and we know, you know, how impactful that it is and can be, mm -hmm. um, we will definitely be doing this again. We have already been approached by um, a neighboring county, mm -hmm. uh, their school district, who said, I want this in my school district next year. What do we do? Awesome. Uh, I've been asked to put a model together of the project with basically what we did kind of step by step, mm -hmm. um, you know, costs associated and, you know, how we got this, how we really got this off the ground yeah. um, and how it can be, you know, done any, in any school district. Um, we've, the school, Muskogee County School District has already ordered an additional 50 copies. Nice. And wants that in all of their media centers. So when we start going into the schools, which we do, um, you know, we will not only take, like this year, we went into the schools with the house that she built. Right. So, you know, when we have, you know, builders and members that have kids in school, hey, take a book and read to read. the students. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we did. And that's kind of how the idea came about, you know, it would be just, and so we'll be able to do that with this book. We'll be able to read excerpts from the book. We'll be able to get, you know, how cool is it that, you know, grandpa, who's a builder gets to go and talk, you know, gets to read to his grandson's class. What a great opportunity and what a great Fantastic. memory and yeah. be able to talk about careers in construction. I love that. Well, it sounds like your school district was very welcoming of this idea. Do you very have much. any, I mean, did you have any resistance at all? Or do you have any advice for anyone who's, you know, maybe trying to get into a bigger school system and meeting with some resistance? When I started this project, now a year ago at this time, we didn't have a workforce development project. Right. So, wow, what we accomplished in this year. Um now we're going to be, you know, this opportunity opens so many others for us. And we have some great opportunities and things we're going to be already doing in the fall. But one of the things that um, I learned was at the um, International Builders Show two years ago. I went up to the booth at the National Housing Endowment and spoke to a man named Taurus Moody. And I said, do you have a few minutes to talk to me? And mm -hmm. he said, absolutely. We went off to the side and I said, I don't know where to begin. And I, I want to do something, but I don't know what to do. And um, he said, let me tell you something. Do your research. Find the people in your community that are doing workforce development. They're there. You just don't know it. Right. Do not reinvent the wheel. Hop on their wheel. Mm hmm. And so that's kind that's of what, yeah. what I did. Yeah. So I found the people that are passionate about it. And I know, you know, we have this construction program at the high school. Mm -hmm. We've done some career days and we've done a few things in the past. But of course, we wanted to really amp it up and really, you know, grow this program Fantastic. and build that relationship. Yeah. Um, and we were able to do that this school year. We were, you know, I, I can go in there anytime I want and they know me and and welcome me in. And um, and it's that way with our members. Right. It didn't take much. It was just we want we want to help and we want to expose kids to what you're doing. And we want people to know what you guys are doing here. And um, it was just asking the questions, making right. the appointments, talking to people and Definitely finding the people with, that are passionate about yeah. workforce development. Absolutely. And I found them. Yeah, you sure did. And it's so cool how you found the high school program and then were, you, know, you were able to you know, take that down to the fifth graders and expand upon it and give it, them something that was relevant for them in fifth grade. 
Yes, so, we also so, did it that afternoon with um, seventh grade students at uh -huh. a middle school in Columbus. Oh, wow. So um, even though we didn't do the book project with the uh -huh. seventh graders, we certainly could have. Right. Oh, um, absolutely. Well, even just the career day where they learn and they go to the stations and they have the writing assignment and they do the birdhouses, really powerful stuff, even without the book part of it. So exactly. You know, yeah, and, and, it really and is. it's a model that definitely can be replicated in other places. So kudos to you and Thank your vision. You yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. I think the more that you are able to, you know, expose these kids and continue to just, you know, drive it home. Um, you know, now they have this incredible book. Um, it's just, it's been really powerful. Yeah, really abso powerful. Absolutely. Well, I think we could talk about this all day, but unfortunately we're running low on time. So I'm sure we have some listeners that would love to find out more about this. And once you kind of have your companion piece, the how-to piece, if you want to do it yourself, you know, they'll have questions about that. But um, let our listeners know how they can get more information on you and the Greater Columbus Home Builders Association. Well, you can definitely find us on our website at greatercolumbushba.com. Um, if you'd like to get a hold of me, um, my information is there. You can follow us on social. We're on Facebook and Instagram, Greater Columbus HBA. And um, we'd love for you to like our pages and follow along and see what we're going to do next, you know, this next school year. You know, what's what's on tap for the 23-24 school year? I don't know. I do know <laughs> that we'll be participating and we will be a host in the Skills USA competition. Oh, that fantastic. Will be held in one of our counties that we serve. And um, yeah, 15 counties in the state of Georgia. We're excited about that. Yeah, that is super exciting. Well, I'm going to say this is a wrap of this week's Atlanta Real Estate Forum Radio. I want to thank Robin Wallace for joining me today and sharing all about what the Columbus HBA is doing for workforce development and workforce you know, initiatives. Some really great stuff there. Again, thank you, Robin. Um, on behalf of our show sponsor, Denim Marketing, I'm your host, Carol Morgan. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's show, please go to iTunes and give us a positive rating and review. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of our shows, you can set them to download on iTunes, Stitcher, or Spotify so you never miss a week. If you're interested in being on the show, reach out to me on email, carol at denimmarketing.com. Let me know what you want to talk to me about. And with that, thank you for listening, and I look forward to seeing you right here again next week. Atlanta Real Estate Forum Radio is made possible by Denim Marketing, the publisher of Atlanta Real Estate Forum, Atlanta's favorite source for real estate and home building news. Denim Marketing is a comfortable fit, like your favorite pair of jeans. Denim Marketing tailors marketing strategies to meet your specific needs and niche. Try them on for size. They will work to create a perfect fit for your company's marketing program. Call them at 770-383-3360 or send an email to info at denimmarketing.com. For more information on Atlanta Real Estate Forum Radio or to inquire about being a guest, contact info at atlantarealestateforum.com. Check out the radio show by visiting atlantarealestateforum.com or by listening to the show on your favorite podcast app. And if you enjoyed today's broadcast, we'd sure appreciate a rating and review on iTunes. Thank you again for listening. And we'll see you next time on Atlanta Real Estate Forum Radio.